This is the hour of grace, so come boldly now. Receive your help in time of need. This is the word for your soul, so come boldly now. Obtain mercy. Darkness will turn in. Spirit, come and help us. I pray for utterance and unction. I pray for revelation. May your anointing break every yoke. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know the theme, grace for all needs. Grace for all needs. I'll take my text from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 16, reading from the Amplified Version. Hebrews 4, 16, it's a very familiar scripture for the province of grace. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace. The throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners. That we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. Appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you look at that scripture, you will see some key words. And they were used specifically for a reason. One, he said, come. Let us do what? Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near. That is come. We are to draw near, to come. But how are we to come? Fearlessly, confident and confidently and boldly. The way you are to come has been spelled out. You are to come fearlessly. Why are you to come fearlessly? It's because you have a loving father. You are coming to your loving father and you are the son. You are the daughter. And you are so loved by this father that this father is ready to give himself for you. That is how much he loves you. So when you are coming to him, you must come knowing whom you are coming to. You're coming to the all-sufficient God, almighty God. You are coming to the Father who has it all. He's all-powerful. He's all-sufficient. You are coming to the Father that is most reliable and most trustworthy. That is why you will come fearlessly. You are coming to the Father who can hear you at all times. Who can hear you no matter how many of you will be talking to him. He will hear everyone. He is not wearied. He's not the one that will give you an appointment when to come. You can come to him at any time. You can come to him. Anyhow, no matter how you are, you can't go to your earthly kings anyhow. You can only approach them by appointment. But no matter how you are, you can come to this particular king, this particular father. The kings of old, they have their specifications 
on how you can approach them. For some of them, you dare not come to them uncheerful. You dare not come to them looking sad. Remember Nehemiah, when the king discovered that he was looking sad, he was in trouble because that could mean death. If you appear before the king looking sad, they interpreted it that you are suggesting that they cannot meet all your needs. And even when you are in their palace, you have reason to be sad. So they saw it as an indictment and they killed that person. So you can't come to them sad. For some of them, you can't come to them except they give you an appointment. At their pleasure, you can only come to them. Remember King Ahasuerus and Esther. Though Esther was the queen, but Esther could not approach Ahasuerus, the husband, anyhow, anytime. Except the king will stretch out the scepter. So ethnic kings, even now, today, you can't just walk into a shorok and say you want to see the president. You can't do that. You can't even walk into the government house and say you want to see the governor. Except you have been given an appointment. And before you be given an appointment, you will be screened. And they must ensure that you are not a person of threat. You are not coming there with an evil intention. But this our king, this our father, no matter who you are, even if you are the head of the terrorist groups in this whole world, and you want to talk to him, you can have access to him. No matter who you are, you are the kingpin of all kidnappers in this world or in this country. And you want to talk to this, our father, do you know you can talk to him? No matter how messed up you are, as a matter of fact, that is the best time to talk to him. He doesn't tell you, go and spruce up. Go and put yourself in a proper way. If you want to see the governor or the king, you have to dress up properly. Am I correct? But for this, our father, anyhow you are, you can come. You want to shout, he will hear you. You want to whisper, he will hear you. You can't even talk, he will hear you. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, come fearlessly. So you don't have any reason why you shouldn't approach this throne in the morning. Hallelujah. Amen. You can come to him with your big request. You can come to him with your small request. Do you know earthly kings will feel insulted if you come to them with small requests? They say, is that why you're disturbing me? But this is our God. You can come to him with a small request. You can come to him with a big request. There is nothing you come to him with that will irritate him. So no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you are, no matter what is the problem, you can come. He said, draw near. Hallelujah. Do you know, in spite of your sinfulness, you can still come. No matter how laden you are with sin, you can come. When you come, he will cleanse you and make you as white as snow. All he's looking for is your heart. So don't say, oh, you don't know what I've done. No matter what you've done, come. No matter where you are in life, come. So this father is a special father. He's God Almighty. He's the all-sufficient God. He's the rock of ages. Hallelujah. 
Come, 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 come confidently. Why will you come confidently? Because you are sure that when you come, he will meet your need. You are not coming to a father that may tell you, oh, you should have come yesterday. Oh, why didn't you come one hour ago? When Esau came to his father, um, Isaac, Isaac said, oh, you were late. Your brother Jacob had just come and I poured out all the blessings. But this particular father, no matter when you come, he still has blessings in abundance for you. He will never tell you, I've exhausted my blessings. Because he's not man. He's not Isaac. And he will never be Isaac. That is why you should come confidently. Because you know he will meet you at your point of need. You will never be too early to see him. You will never be too late to see him. There is no time you come knocking. He will say, no, no, no. I'm resting. Don't disturb me. He won't tell you it is time for my siesta. He does not go to bed. He's always awake. So there is no time you choose to come that he will not hear you. Hallelujah. Don't think you are late. You are never too late coming. He said, draw near fearlessly, confidently, and boldly. Why must you come boldly? Yes, you must come boldly because you don't need a spokesman. You don't need anybody to talk for you. If you want to talk to earthly kings, you may go and look for a spokesperson. So that the person will present your case eloquently. The person will marshal out your points the way you want them marshaled out. Maybe you are slow in speech. Maybe you have speech impairment. But for this father, come with every impairment of speech. Come boldly, he will hear you. He sees you as his child. And just like babies, when we give birth to our children and they begin to grow, you remember, there will come a stage in their life that only you, the parent, will understand what that baby is saying. Am I correct? I was recently asking my wife to remember when our children were growing up, there were some things that only us knew what they were talking about. I was reminding her, and each of them, once they get to that stage, it's like they just get into that mold. It's a phase until they pass out of that phase. There will come a time, the brother with us, his name is Abraham. But when they get to that age when they can now start talking, they will start calling him that damn damn. That damn damn. But we know who that damn damn is. And he will be teaching them a song, Father Abraham, Father Abraham. You know that song? So when they get to that, what will they sing? Da 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 and we understand. But strangers who may come, we say, what are they talking? We say, we know what they are talking. And the moment they begin to say those things, they are like music to our ears. But for a stranger, it may mean nothing. You want your child to communicate to you no matter how that child knows how to communicate. The best way that child knows to communicate, you want that child to communicate. You are looking forward to hear that child. You are never put off because the child does not know how to speak well. That is how this our father is. He's not going to turn you away because you can't speak well. 
No matter your impairment, he's looking forward to your talk. Come. He understands you so well. Do you know what? Even when you cannot talk, you are so heavy in your heart that you don't even know what to say. Do you know? You can just tell him, Father, you know my heart. You know what is in there. Please help me. That's all. He will just go to your heart and download everything that is there. He will download it and begin to give solution to your problems. Just give him access to your heart. That's all he's waiting for. So there is no reason why you cannot come to him. You have no excuse whatsoever. Don't say it is because I can't do this or I can't do that. No, he's looking forward to you coming to him. Hallelujah. Where is he asking you to come? To the throne of grace. Hallelujah. He's asking you to come to the throne of grace. But venture you do not know. The throne of grace, as we know it today, was the mercy seat in the Old Testament. When you talk about the Ark of Covenant, you know the Ark of Covenant, on top of it you had the mercy seat. The mercy seat was where God met the needs of the people of Israel, his children. It was on the mercy seat that the blood of the sacrificial animals were poured. And when God saw the blood, he overlooked their sins and met their needs. The throne of grace today is the same thing that the mercy seat used to be. The difference is that instead of the blood of animals, it is Jesus that is now on the throne of grace. Because he was the one that poured out his blood. So he now sits on that throne of grace. And because Jesus is there and his blood has been shed, when you approach God, you approach God through the throne of grace. When he sees his son, he sees the blood, he will overlook whatever that are your failures and he will meet your need. Hallelujah. He that the Bible says that Jesus, our propitiation, he is the one, the one that, you know, did atonement for us. The one that sacrificed his blood for us. If you look at the mercy seat in the old covenant, you will discover that it is the same thing. The mercy seat was a place that atonement was done. So you are coming to the throne of grace. You are not coming to the throne of justice. Or judgment. If you were to go to the throne of judgment, you will go with trepidation. Because you don't know what you're going to meet. You know, when you go to court and they say today is judgment day, any lawyer will tell you that. No matter how well you've conducted your case, on that day of judgment, you really don't know what is going to happen. You may think that you have done your case so well. Every lawyer will tell you that. Sometimes you will think, oh, I'm going to have victory here. Only for you to get to court and you discover you will have an adverse judgment. So through experience, whenever it is the judgment day, you will approach the court with trepidation with some fear, with some uncertainty, with some anxiety, because you don't know what is going to come. It is worse if you are 
an accused person and your case was a criminal case. So on that day, the judgment will either send you to prison or set you free. You have more reason to be afraid. It will be worse for you if the offense for which you were charged will be a capital punishment offense. And if it is something that will require life to be taken, you can then imagine how fearful the accused person will be. Because on that day, the accused will know whether he's going to live or die. So when you are approaching the throne of judgment, you will come with fear, with trepidation. But he has not called us to a throne of judgment. He has called us to the throne of grace. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Throne of grace. Unmerited favor. He's not calling you to come and receive what you deserve. He's calling you to receive favor that you do not deserve. You know, when you write an exam, depending on how you read or how you prepared or how the exam went, you'll be expecting some certain results. Am I correct? And there will be anxiety. But here, it is not so. You are just coming with your need. Need. He's not going to meet your need because you deserved it. He's going to meet it in spite of the fact that you do not deserve it. You may not be deserving of the solution to your need, but because you are coming to the throne of grace, the throne of unmerited favor, he's going to give it to you all the same. Yeah. Why do we call it throne? Because the king is sitting on that seat. The king is there, King Jesus. And you know because he's the king, he has all the power and all the authority. He cannot be bound by any law. Whatever he says becomes the law. Nobody is going to quote section this, section that to him. Nobody will say, according to the constitution of Nigeria or America, this and that will happen. No. It is whatever he says that becomes the final say. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why you must come boldly. That is why you must come rejoicing. Because today, every need shall be met. Amen. He will meet your need. I pray the Lord will grant you understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Every need. And you know we have needs in this world. Need. A necessity. We all have needs. Spiritual. Physical. Mar marital. Academic. Health. Name them. They are there. Needs, 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 needs all over. Financial need. It's not a want, but a need. When you are owing rent, when you are owing school fees, money becomes a necessity. It's no more a luxury. You are not looking for money for a, a party. You are not looking for money for a picnic. You are not looking for money to change your wardrobe. You are looking for money to pay school fees. It is a need. It is a need. Remember, we are talking about needs. We are not talking about wants. And when you have a need... Nothing again matters except that need. When you have a need, a particular need, you will be striving to make sure you meet that need. And today, 
He's asking us to come to the throne of grace where every need shall be met. Amen. I say where every need shall be met. Amen. I believe you've been richly blessed. You can join us at RCCG House of Grace, Rivers Province 5, 55 Woji Estate Road, Woji, Port Harcourt. Or send us an email at info at rccghouseofgraceph.org. Or visit our website, rccghouseofgraceph.org. You can watch us live on YouTube, House of Grace TV. Thank you. Thank God bless. This is the hour of grace, so come boldly now, receive your hand.